Associate of Born to Kill Drug Gang Leader Sentenced to 10 Months in Prison for Lying to the FBI Philadelphia, United States Attorney William M. McSwain announced that Hein Gwynn, 37, of Newcastle, Delaware, was sentenced to 10 months in prison and three years of supervised release by United States District Court Judge J. Curtis Joyner for lying to the FBI during the course of a double homicide investigation. On the night of August 26, 2014, Tam Lu and four associates kidnapped three Philadelphia drug dealers who had failed to pay a substantial drug debt. Lu was a member of a gang called BTK or Born to Kill. Lu and his associates transported the three victims to the Schuylkill River, bound them with duct tape, weighed down their bodies, stabbed them, and dumped all three victims into the river. Two victims died in the river while the third somehow managed to crawl out of the river and flag down a passing motorist on Kelly Drive for assistance. Hein Gwyn was a close friend of Tam Lu. Immediately following the murders, Gwyn traveled from Delaware to Lee's house in Philadelphia. Lu knew that the Philadelphia police would be looking to arrest him for the murders, so he asked Gwyn to drive him and his family to New York State. The U.S. Marshals Service eventually hunted down Lou and placed him under arrest. He was charged with the murders and convicted at trial. A Philadelphia County jury sentenced him to death. At the same time, the FBI began investigating the crime in order to bring the other perpetrators, some of whom lived in New York, to justice. On three occasions, the FBI interviewed Hein Gwyn about traveling to Tam Lee's house following the murders. During those interviews, Gwyn repeatedly lied to the FBI and stated that he did not travel to Lee's house that night. The FBI subsequently obtained cell site data from Hein Gwyn's phone and proved his lies. Lying to the FBI or to any federal investigating agency is always a serious offense, one which we will prosecute vigorously, said U.S. Attorney McSwain. But lying in the course of a federal double homicide investigation is a sure way to land in prison. This type of criminal dishonesty is reprehensible and will never be tolerated. The case was investigated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation with assistance from the Philadelphia Police Department. The case is being prosecuted by Assistant United States Attorney Robert J. Livermore. They stabbed him eight times, blindfolded him with duct tape, weighed him down with a bucket of cement, then threw him into the school kill. And still, Tan Vong survived to clamber out of the inky waters, flag down a passing car, and eventually identify one of his would-be killers. His testimony helped put Tam In Lu, a reputed Vietnamese gang member in South Philadelphia, on death row for the murders of Viet and Vu Kevin Huynh, brothers also left to drown that August night in 2014. But the identities of the masked men who Vung said had helped Lu abduct, torture, and kill his victims remained unknown. Now, nearly six years after Vong's remarkable river escape, federal authorities have quietly charged six other suspects who they say either enlisted Lu or helped him carry out one of the city's most vicious incidents of gang violence. In indictments unsealed as recently as this month, the six defendants range from a 48-year-old dim sum restaurant employee from Queens, once reputed to have been the fourth highest ranking member of a gang that terrorized New York City's Chinatown in the 1990s, to a man who has confessed to helping Lou escape Philadelphia as the dragnet tightened around him. Newly released court records and interviews with U.S. Attorney William M. McSwain, prosecutors in his office and FBI investigators reveal a broad account of the night the Huynh brothers died, a story that spans several states and has its roots in the aftermath of the Vietnam War. The hope is that these men won't ever have the opportunity to do something like this again, said Scott Baber, a member of the team of Philadelphia-based FBI agents whose efforts led to the arrests. Until they were charged, we had people out on the streets who had quite literally gotten away with murder. Where is the money? The testimony that Vong, 24, offered at least 2016 trial provided a starting point for an investigation that would last more than two years. He told jurors that his friends the Huynh brothers, whom authorities had long known as South Philadelphia marijuana dealers, sought his help on August 26th. 
2014, to raise money for a $300,000 drug debt they owed their supplier in California. Vong scraped together what he could. But when he showed up as directed at Lee's house on 72nd Street in Eastwick with only $41,000, things quickly went south. Tam Min Lu Spotting the winds tied up in Lee's garage and stripped to their underwear under the watch of masked gunmen, Vong turned and tried to flee, only to be pistol-whipped, stripped, and zip-tied like the others. They kept saying, where is the money, he later told jurors. When his answers failed to satisfy, Vong testified, Lou and his accomplices loaded their captives into a van and drove them to the river. Lou was familiar to Vong. The Huynes had previously introduced him to the man as their godbrother. But when FBI agents interviewed Vong after his escape, he couldn't identify any of the masked men. Mike Breslin, supervisor of the FBI's Organized Crime Task Force in Philadelphia, said that in tracking down those assailants years later, Lee's cell phone records from that night, which largely traced back to anonymous burner phones, were the only thing agents initially had to go on. This was the reverse of almost every other case that I've been involved in, he said. Usually, you have a cooperator and you confirm what they tell you with cell phone records. Here we were starting only with records and without any witnesses. An FBI team of agents and analysts that included Baber, Mike Fisher, Elizabeth D'Angelo, and John Cardos persisted for years, zeroing in on the few calls that traced back to registered accounts. They knocked on doors in Philadelphia and New York City, all the while trying to persuade the people behind them to help sketch out the network of those who knew of or were involved in the brutal events of that night. There were language barriers and cultural barriers, Fisher said. But as a group, I think they understood that these guys were bad and were willing to share as much information as they had. Assistant U.S. Attorney Robert Livermore, the prosecutor overseeing the case, had his doubts. When you've been doing this for a year and you still haven't been able to identify anyone, doubt starts creeping into your mind, Livermore said. I was certainly willing to throw in the towel long before the agents were. But eventually, the trail led them to Lamb True, a 48-year-old restaurant worker from Queens who shared a striking link with Lou. Both had been ranking members of a gang of Vietnamese immigrants that named itself Born to Kill. Authorities have since alleged that 48-year-old Lam Tru originally ordered the kidnapping of the brothers. Lam Tru, whom authorities described in a detention order as a gangster and drug dealer from New York with a lengthy criminal record, faces trial in June on conspiracy, extortion, and drug and racketeering counts. Prosecutors stress that Lam Tru didn't order the murders, but note that when one sends three goons to collect a $300,000 drug debt, it is reasonably foreseeable that events can go off track and someone can be seriously hurt or killed. And although Lam True was reportedly upset about the killings, prosecutors allege in the detention order that he ordered some of his co-defendants to return to Philadelphia and execute the surviving man to prevent him from being a witness. Three other men accused of having helped Lou face kidnapping, racketeering, extortion, and conspiracy counts, a fourth is alleged to have acted as a lookout. The Philadelphia Inquirer reports that a sixth man, Hein Gwyn, 37, pleaded guilty earlier this month to lying to FBI agents about helping Lou escape to upstate New York. U.S. Marshals have arrested the man accused of stabbing three men and dumping their bodies in the Schuylkill River back in August. 43-year-old Tam Min Lu was captured Tuesday in Ashland, Virginia. He was taken into custody without incident. Police say Lu and members associated with the Vietnamese gang born to kill beat, stabbed and bound three men, threw them into the school kill, and left them for dead. One of the victims survived the brutal stabbing and helped police identify Lu. Police say the men were tortured at Lee's home on 72nd Street near Elmwood. Investigators say they found buckets of roofing cement, similar to the ones used to weigh the victims down when they were thrown into the river. The men were killed after prosecutors say Lou gave the men money to buy drugs, but they gambled it away. Execution scheduled for man behind kidnapping, torture of brothers dumped in the school kill. 
Corrections officials signed a notice of execution Tuesday for a man sentenced to die for the killings of two Vietnamese brothers whose bodies were found bound, tortured, and tossed in the Schuylkill River in 2014. But that doesn't necessarily mean Tam Min Lu, 49, will be put to death anytime soon. U.S. Marshals have just announced the capture of Tam Lee. He's wanted for the murders of two brothers from Paoli. Lee was arrested in Ashland, Virginia. Authorities say he stabbed three men, bound their bodies, and then dumped them in the Schuylkill River along Kelly Drive back in August. One of the victims miraculously survived. Lee is a career criminal and was on the U.S. Marshals' most wanted fugitive list.